Hello, I'm Steve Shaw, National Coordinator of Football Officials and Secretary Rules Editor for the NCAA. And today we're continuing our series of training videos for 2024, and we're gonna be focused on game action from week six. Now, before we get into our plays, I wanna take a moment to say thank you for the good work so far this year, but we can't let up. We're into the balance of our season now. We've gotta continue our preparation, make sure we're ready every time we walk out of that tunnel to officiate at our dead level best. So important. Now, a couple things from a post-game report, foul reports, replay reports, that's critical data, critical input to our rules committee. Make sure we do a good job with that. We need accurate data. So I'm counting on you to do a great job there. Unsportsmanlike conduct, we're doing a great job with that. Let's continue that, don't let up. And we'll get some further guidance in this video about simulating firing weapons, brandishing a weapon. So pay attention when we get there, don't let up on unsportsmanlike conduct. And then finally, our player safety fouls. We have to be very good there, especially with targeting, but really across the board, if it's player safety related, let's do our best in officiating that. Now, a quick report out on overtime games. In FBS, we've had 16 overtime games so far this year. 10 have been decided in the first overtime period and six have gone to a second overtime period and nothing has gone beyond two overtime periods and that's good. So with that, let's get on into our plays. Our first play this week is a punt and the ball is gonna be fair caught right at the 15 yard line, but the line judge has a flag down on the play. And as we go back and take a look at the gunner at the bottom of the formation, the receiving team is set up for a double team block. And we see that number 10 of the receiving team continues to block the gunner all the way to the boundary. And that's okay, but we see as the kicking team player gets just beyond the restricted area out of bounds, number 10 goes in and gives him a big shove into the people in the team area. Now it's a good alert by our line judge to stay with this action and get the marker out. And we know by rule, it is illegal for a player to be clearly out of bounds when initiating a block against an opponent who is also out of bounds. So good call by our line judge here. Play two, we get a kickoff. The receiver decides to return the kick from the goal line and he's gonna get back out to just short of the 20. But there's some dead ball action and our back judge comes in with the penalty flag. Now, as we go back and take a look at the action, we see that the ball is clearly dead and we get continuing action. And finally, number 12 of the receiving team, he shoves number two of the kicking team in the face, and that's what we call. Now we announced that the foul is a dead ball, personal foul, hands to the face. But I think we'd be much better here going with unsportsmanlike conduct. And remember, by rule, dead ball contact fouls, such as pushing, shoving, striking, et cetera, that occur clearly after the ball is dead and are not part of game action should be unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. And also, we may should consider offsetting fouls here as number two shove creates the retaliation by number 12. But back judge, good alert to stay with this action. And if we go with unsportsmanlike conduct, we put a counter on these players and that helps us clean up future action. Play three is a two play vignette on roughing and running into the kicker. Now our first play of the vignette, we get a punt and there's contact on the kicker and a flag comes in. And as we go back and take a look at the replay, we see that the defender, he lays out, but he's gonna make forcible contact to the plant leg of the kicker. And we know our officiating standards say it's always roughing the kicker when there is forcible contact to the kicker's plant leg. And that's what we had here and that was the call. So good job. So play two of the vignette, it's a field goal attempt and we see the kicker goes down and there's a flag down as well on the play. And as we look at the replay, we see that the defender again lays out an attempt to block the kick and he just simply slides through the kicking leg of the kicker. Now our officiating standards, as we know, go on to say that it shall be running into the kicker if the defender simply runs through the kicking leg and there's no forcible contact. So this was a correct call for running into the kicker. We know running into is a five yard penalty with no automatic first down, but here it was half the distance to the goal and the penalty yardage gave the offense a first down. But let's make sure we do a good job with ball position as we enforce all penalties. Now the play was snapped from the left hash. The penalty is enforced from the previous spot 
and we ultimately get it right, but we have to relocate the ball after our enforcement. So let's be crisp with ball position. Play four, we get a pass out into the flat. It's caught by number 11 of the offense. He turns up field and is marked out of bounds inside the one by the line judge. But we've got a flag down from our field judge for offensive pass interference. Now, as we go back and take a look at the outside receiver, he comes back to the ball and blocks two defenders, allowing 11 to be wide open. But as we look at the snap, it was at the four and a half, the ball is caught right at the line of scrimmage. And we know by rule, there's no OPI or DPI on a play where the pass does not cross the neutral zone. So the crew does a good job here discussing this and they pick up this flag. Now, the second aspect of the play is did the runner score? And we see from the end zone view, his left foot is in bounds and the right foot hits the pylon. And where the runner touches the pylon, we know that the ball is immediately dead and he gets goal line extended. But as we look down the goal line, we can verify the left foot is in. And as we pause it when the foot touches the pylon, the ball is just short of the goal line and goal line extended. So this is not a touchdown and the ball should be marked just short of the goal. A very good spot. Play five, we're late in the half, inside of a minute when the ball is snapped. And the quarterback, he drops back, looks and looks for a receiver. Finally, he's going to be under heavy duress and just dumps the ball off as he's going down. Now, we rule incomplete pass, and the ball never gets back near the line of scrimmage. And we see the line judge come in to discuss grounding. And we get paged by replay during this discussion. And maybe that truncated our discussion about potential grounding. So let's always finish our field work before going to replay. And as we look at the pass, there's no receiver in the area. Probably the nearest receiver is over 15 yards away. So we had grounding, but we're gonna go to replay. And with our first look, it's clear that the quarterback was down before releasing the ball. So all the grounding discussion is moot. So replay is gonna overturn this to quarterback down and we get a great announcement by our referee. After further review, the runner's knee was down with 46 seconds. Now it's a good job to get the clock and the runoff all sorted out and make this all in one announcement. Very well done there. Play six, we get a throw downfield back toward the middle. Number five of the defense makes a great play on the ball and the pass is incomplete. As we continue to watch number five and his actions, we get a flag down from our back judge and we get an excellent announcement from our referee. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense for simulating brandishing a weapon. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. We know that anytime you simulate firing a weapon, that is an automatic unsportsmanlike conduct foul. If you brandish a weapon, as we see here, and by definition, brandishing is presenting a weapon in such a manner to induce fear, intimidate, or taunt another person. And in our rule, brandishing a weapon is not an automatic unsportsmanlike conduct foul, but it falls under the unsportsmanlike conduct guidelines for all actions that state if there's anything threatening, a threatening gesture, taunting, acts that provoke ill will, or an act that is demeaning to the opponent or to the image of the game, it is a foul. This was a correct call for unsportsmanlike conduct. Play seven is a kickoff, and the ball is caught by the receiver on the dead run near the 10. He makes an excellent return and is finally down near the 35-yard line. And we see that number 45 of the kicking team with no helmet, he kind of piles in on the tackle, and there are multiple flags down here. As we go back and take a look at the action, we see that number 45 is being blocked and his helmet comes off. Now he gets up and initially tries to retrieve the helmet, but then he comes in on the tackle. And we know that by rule, a player whose helmet comes completely off during the down may not continue to participate beyond the immediate continuing action in which they're engaged. And so this is a correct call for a personal foul for continued participation without a helmet. And this rule is in place to protect the players. And this rule would also apply whether or not the player was able to put his helmet back on during the down. So this is good work by the crew. Our last play this week is a very routine field goal attempt with an unexpected bounce. Now we see 
the ball, it splits the uprights, but it hits a big pole just behind the goal and it bounces back through the uprights and lands back in the end zone. Now the kick is rule good and that's correct, but let's talk about the rule here. We know that for a field goal to be successful, it must pass over the crossbar and between the uprights and be declared dead beyond the inline, or if it's blown back, but it doesn't return over the crossbar, it still scores a field goal. Now the crossbar and uprights are treated as a line, not a plane. So if the ball was over the crossbar between the uprights, but was blown back and returned over the crossbar into the field, then it would not be good. But this kick hit the big pole, is declared dead there, and the field goal is good, even though the dead ball comes back across the crossbar. Very good, very unusual play, handled well by the crew. Well, that's it for our plays this week. Overall, very good work, but some good learning points that we can incorporate into our crew discussions and our pregames. So let's remember this week, we want quality fouls, make it be there, nothing technical. Let's do a great job in the dead ball period. As the intensity picks up this year, we have to be prepared to handle all situations. Excellent communications with coaches, players, and other officials. Always use your winning words. Let's concentrate. Let's give everything we have on every play for 60 minutes. Always display your integrity, courage, and poise. Be mentally and physically prepared to work the game. And let's keep hustling. Best of luck to all.